Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for April. Now we have six topics today, so let's dig in right away. We had a lot of updates to Firestore recently. First up, the support for OR clauses and queries that we announced last month is now also available in our Flutter SDKs, as you can see here. And because of the changes we made for OR clauses, we also increased the number of values that you can have for IN clauses. Across all conditions in your query, you can now have up to 30 disjunctions. If you're curious about Firestore's internals and how it scales to large numbers of users and operations, our engineering team has written a new article called Understand Real-Time Queries at Scale. And while every Firestore database is tied to one specific region, occasionally its traffic might get routed through a different region. If you want to prevent this, you can now configure a regional endpoint in your code, as shown here. We just added a new command to the Firebase CLI to make it easier to import large JSON files into your real-time database. This new database colon import command streams the data in from the JSON file that you specify, while at the same time writing it in chunks to the real-time database. This new command works similar to the long existing Firebase import tool, but it can handle much larger files, allowing you to import JSON data that exceeds the available memory of your system and the maximum size of calls to the REST API of the real-time database. So try it out today with the link that I provided in the description. If your Android app uses phone number authentication, you probably know that SafetyNet has been deprecated and can't be added to apps anymore by June. The Firebase SDK can now use Play Integrity as its attestation provider to verify that your app is unmodified. So upgrade to the latest SDK for Android to ensure that your app continues to work. And to use Play Integrity, you will have to enter your Play Signing SHA-256 key in the Firebase console, unless you've done that already, of course. And don't forget to review Firebase's data disclosure page to make sure that your app's privacy details in the Play Store are accurate and complete. If you use app distribution to send early releases of your app to testers, you can now search for those testers in your project or in a group in the Firebase console by entering their name or email address. And if you can't find the tester that should be in there, you can now add them right from the search result by clicking the Add Tester button. Multi-factor authentication, or MFA, makes sign-in more secure by requiring multiple forms of authentication, such as a password and a code that sends to your phone. TOTP is a type of MFA that uses a time-based algorithm to generate a new code every few seconds. Now, this code is then sent to your phone. You must enter it as the second authentication factor to log in. These time-based one-time passwords, or TOTPs, are more secure than SMS-based MFA because they cannot be intercepted. Support for TOTP is now rolling out to Firebase Authentication with Identity Platform, and it has just landed in the client-side SDK. And you can enable TOTP on your project through the server-side admin SDKs for Node and Go, and through the REST API. And finally, on May 10th this year, we're hosting Google I.O. again at the Shoreline Amphitheater in Mountain View and online, of course. We have a lot of releases lined up already, so check into the keynotes and our What's New in Firebase session to learn about all the updates to Firebase. And I hope to see some of you in person on May the 10th and everyone else right here on our YouTube channel, where we'll have many more technical deep dive sessions too. And those were all the updates we have today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, my name is Frank Ropuff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.